see you. Great to have you back on the show. Um, okay. Yeah, I'd like to play the first video to sort of, um, it asks a question and shows you a few things what I did, and you can, we can talk over while it plays. I think can we? Good. Oh, okay. yeah, that's kind of neat. We could have done that with the talking dogs, too, but yeah. that's going to have so, to be um, another day. So can you day. play the number one? Yeah. Okay, so for this one, I, this is sort of a comic book story. It's the idea is the city is a giant gear, and it's filled with all these spaceless kind of people. And it, the questions that I'm asking is, like, who are all these people, and what is the city? And what are the things that I did to it? in order to understand this better, um, is I went out into the streets and into the public and started doing a lot of performances. So what I think this has is a few little reels showing some of the graffiti arts and some of the other kind of live painting things that I'll go out and do. Oh, where'd you do this one? That's that one was done up on DuPont. That's in Kensington. This one actually lasted almost five years. Uh, it was just only destroyed very recently. Uh, yeah, just that during the G20 anger. Then this is a more recent image where you see now the city isn't faceless people anymore. They're all little characters. Yeah. And that's something I learned from uh, doing a lot of public performance and all the public art. And another big part of it is conversation. This video is from the Toronto Outdoor Art Show. Yeah. And I would do that every year. And there's thousands and thousands of people come through and I'll live paint and talk to them Is that all. just over at City Hall? Yeah, at City yeah. Hall. We do that every, almost every year, I think, yeah. So now, whose idea was it to do these videos? I make these videos. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. So that's real art. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Right this there. like partially I put these together for the show tonight, but I do this regular too. I just tried to condense a lot of stuff so we'd have some cool clips. Yeah. But animation, film, and video is the next thing. I don't actually do a lot of street performance anymore. Yeah. And now the idea is to add those things up that I learned, and I want to translate them into animations and comics. Yeah. What is art? I mean, yeah. let's get right down to the basics. Yeah. Because like, I, I, I. I feel like asking that question to almost every artist that, that comes in. That's why I like it to be a good question. Um, well, for me, I always thought that art is a way of communicating. It's sort of like this universal language um, that everyone can understand, and it doesn't seem to be able to uh, deceive too well because of the way that we read it. So whatever the message the art is sending, people seem to understand it. Now, I also believe that the art should be educational and talk about valid, uh, valid issues, too, mm -hmm. as it's, you know, sending out this universal language and that's what makes good art mm -hmm. and I believe that everything else in the art world is just really decoration if it's not doing this educational um, critical and thinking and communication that, that mm -hmm. that's what I believe real art is in the real world it's not necessarily true a lot of art is decoration for expensive homes yeah. but a so, real artist the role a, of the real artist. but I think that's yeah I think of that as designer decoration I think the artist's job is to criticize and satirize and educate to the best of his ability or her ability that's so but uh, what do you what do you think some of the um, big issues are that uh, that artists should be working to communicate to the culture you know to hold that mirror up to the culture and say what do we need to be uh, thinking about or looking at well the issues themselves are very difficult and for me I'm not a very didactic artist I don't want to give any one pinpointed answer but what I do is I ask the audience to look at themselves and look at everybody else and realize that we're all part of one big machine mm -hmm. and every single action and reaction affects everything else mm -hmm. so that's sort of my personal message now I, I think other artists that have maybe a more um, didactic or more signified can take that same idea and apply it to very specific personal problems for example I have a friend who's in the Congo right now who per who does a lot of artwork to help raise money for building schools there mm -hmm. so there's different ways and avenues to put it in but for me personally I don't have one single answer I'm just got asking everyone to take a really good look at themselves and look at everybody else around them before they do anything you know? yeah. when you say that it, it makes me think that in a sense the artist is not so different from for example a politician both are on a spectrum of of you know the artist is there to to at maybe ask questions and get people to think about it mm -hmm. whereas the politician is there actually taking action yes. hopefully after having reflected a little the bit the only on difference by my definition the artist can't lie even if he tries <laughs> people understand the painting well maybe one day we'll have a politician that can't lie <laughs> uh, yeah maybe um, we had one on today maybe but um, uh with what you're saying though your your art specifically it does communicate it's very intricate and it does tell a story always but do you find that everyone because you are talking about you know the art speaks for itself people understand it do you find people most of the time do you understand your artwork yeah very much so um actually could we run the second animation while we talk about this it's kind of mm -hmm. neat this one shows a story and this one 
Um, my theme is also the city, that's where I work, so I'm mm -hmm. communicating with people in the city and um, people connect with them. That's an amazing thing. When I'm on the street, I've met people who are very young and never been to a gallery, and I've met people very old, and I've met people from all walks of life and mm -hmm. all over the world, and I've made connections with all of these people talking about this idea of the city as a gear, mm -hmm. and everybody's involved in it. So it's really neat. Yeah, and there's the little bubble guy. So at first he gets swiped by his uh, credit card, and <laughs> then his car drives out from the middle of his chest. I think he's just been hung by his uh, necktie and the dollars bled his suit into place. Uh, the necktie tightened and lost his head. Oh, nobody's looking, so maybe he'll look at a little literature and get excited, but there's always someone bigger. Uh oh. Oh, he just got branded, and that's almost enough is enough. He comes back with his little change your life sign marching the streets until he wears away. And the pennies on his eyes are obviously plucked at the, at the by end. the taxpayer. By, I mean by, the tax uh, collector. The tax collector, yeah. And this one's just a little psychological, like kind of turmoil that was meant to express um, the feelings of war, knowing things like that are going on all around you all the time, but you're just stuck in a loop where you can't really do anything about it. So he, he gives you some of the ideas in, that are, I, I'm sending out, you know, about the city. I love this one, and it's appropriate for the time that we're in. When did you create this one? Actually, that one was created in March, I think, 2003, 2004, wow. just after September 11th, but before mm -hmm. the, the bombings began. And that's my first living painting. I've been doing a lot of these again lately, and the idea is they're kind of like looped animated, and the intention yeah. is to project them up on the walls at full scale to look like paintings, but they're all alive. And I've been receiving some funding from the Ontario Arts Council and Toronto Arts Council Great. to do those living paintings. That's amazing. Yeah. That was, I love that one. You should play that one. <laughs> we just did. <laughs> um, no. So uh, how did you get started? Um, like? in, I always loved comic books and cartoons since I was a kid. And then as I got a little bit older, um, I started to realize I wanted to tell stories that weren't about superheroes, something mm -hmm. more important, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and that's uh, when I started doing art and started going out to the streets to talk about it. And I brought, um, the third one is a reel of all the street art, so roll that, because this is like kind of how I got started. Okay. I so think it's much more fun to watch than me talk. It's, can we uh, <laughs> it's great. Yeah, we can make faces. We don't have to look yeah. so cool. So yeah, <laughs> when I first things I did in public were these uh, murals. So I used to go out and I started painting all these murals and this was after I'd done a couple gallery shows, I'd been at the college and I really wanted to communicate with people who weren't in the art scene uh, and that was a big deal to me. So um, most of these murals in the beginning were renegade murals I would go out in the middle of the night and grab a can of paint and just make them and I think there'll be, a, yeah there's one of those. Where's that one? That's out on Queen Street West, the side of a poor store owner's building there. Is it still there, that one? No, he would paint over anything that happened oh, there yeah. pretty quickly. Uh, in the earlier days, I did that. I don't do that anymore. Those were my earliest street performances, and at that time, I just had a knapsack with some pins and cardboard sketches, and that's where I really got to start talking to people. Yeah, and you can see the uh, display growing as the, uh, as the time goes by on there. So uh, as I'm better I got at it and the more I communicated with people, the more the art grew as well. And also these kind of blank faces in the beginning start to become characters. And that happened from constantly conversing with people on the streets. And the, that one's duct taped to the front of the store. That's when they started to get to be about 12 by 15 feet. And then Chris, this guy Chris Bell hired me to do the side of his house. Where's that? that? That's at Queen and Bathurst, Wolseley Street, one street okay. north of Queen Is and Bathurst. Still there, that one? That one's permanent. And nobody yeah. messes with that. And then just as time went on, it got busier and busier and more fun. And you see that in the pictures there Where's too. Where's that one? Oh, that's, that's at the up. outdoor art show as well. Here at the and, city hall. Yeah, yeah, city hall and murals around. And now I do murals. If I do them like that, they're always on those construction hoardings because they don't offend anybody. The earlier one I did on the store, I wouldn't do that again. And this, yeah, and this is kind of uh, where, you know, at the end of the streets, I was doing these 10 by 12 foot drawings in about two and a half to three hours. And those are the really busy and most fun times. You get 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 a lot of conversations going on yeah. there. Yeah. Now, what happens to those? Are those do um, those get bought by people? Sometimes or? they got bought, and sometimes they got destroyed, and sometimes. Um, they got shown in galleries, and I have a few of them. Yeah, and then at the this is more recently now that you notice tents and traveling. Yeah. The shows are not doing the street performance regularly anymore. Now I do it at events like Nuit Blanche and on the road. Now where was that uh, arch? It looked like that was the, uh, uh, New York. That was Washington oh yeah? Square Park. Oh, okay. And that's a fun place to go and paint. <laughs> How often do you get down to uh, 
or get out of Toronto to other locations? Like only York once or, or twice a year. Now. Yeah. Yeah. And then I only do about one or two big shows outdoors here now, and yeah. the rest of the time I'm making animations. Yeah. yeah. So how do you find the the uh, because you, you know you're doing it's a very public thing that you're doing, and mm -hmm. you're as you say engaged in conversation while you're doing it. How do you find uh, the people in different cities? It's really fun, and uh, I don't find them that different. The one, the only one thing I really like about Toronto is it's actually probably the most diverse. Even in New York, I didn't mm -hmm. find it. I, there's more people there, but more different kinds of people. That's the one thing I really liked about Toronto. But I do find people are kind of the same everywhere. They yeah, look at people. me at first, and they don't know what it is, and they think it's a big mess. Then I tell them what it's about, and they start to understand it and open up. So. <laughs> and that's exactly what it is, and that's kind of where I wanted to lead with it. Not yeah. does everyone see it, because it's so intricate, and it's so beautiful what you do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's nice that you do break down and take the time to explain to people because I remember some of your work you're like this is where it began <laughs> you know with a guy who plays a trumpet and all of a sudden everything around it you know yeah. it's it's that, really nice that's kind of part of the comic booky mm -hmm. um, aspect of the thing where there's stories even if they don't have the words are laid out so yeah. I had to find a way to tell them and I really liked uh, yeah talking with people um, I also thought about it as like this kind of Zen march when people didn't like it or didn't mm -hmm. look at it. It was even more fun <laughs> to try to get them, you know. Like I had some guys over at the bar while I'm painting. I hear them like really loud bad mouthing me. So I'll pick up a painting, go over there, and I'll explain it to him. And if he can still bad mouth me after that, then I'll accept his opinion. You know, it's really fun. That was yeah. the streets. Yeah. It's now uh, let's talk. Can we talk about, a bit about the comics? Do we big deal for me all my life was comics and I wanted to draw about more than superheroes so the streets were my experience and my opportunity to learn about them. Oh yeah, so that's the incredible shrinking office lady. Uh, every day her routine makes her feel a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller still until eventually she's scaling up the side of her chair just to get her to her desk. Uh, nobody noticed she had vanished, but the office had noticed the desk was empty and swiftly replaced her, and someone's sitting that down. sounds like uh -oh. half of my history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay, that's a guy, he's the city's favorite broadcaster. Um, he knows his face very well. He practices it looking in the video, and he practices his face looking in the mirror. He has a fantastic smile, has the fantastic cheekbones. He can mesmerize people with his eyes. He spent so much time looking at the reflection that by the time he realized that he was the one inside the mirror, it was too late. So, mm. And I think there's one more little one, and this is the war one. Yeah. Oh, so this guy yells, next up, soldier, you're on the path to glory. They're all in the trenches there. He blows the whistle. The guy gets excited and runs up to the top and is quickly annihilated. Commanders look at each other and say, next. So those are some samples of the comic. So I you need to do a wall in here. You know? <laughs> I was thinking about that. That would be <laughs> That's a good awesome, idea. or a ceiling, or something. Yeah. So hey. those are from the web comic. So every Friday I put up a one-page story like that, and then mm -hmm. a graphic novel every year. I have three ready already, and this that's that's is a big deal for me too. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you keep focused though? Because you seem really on top of it, and you're very organized. Is is it your love of art? Is it the message? What is it? How I, did you get to this I, point, or were you always like this? Kind of a little kid. I had this book where I drew all the covers, and I wrote out the stories, and I started finishing some of them, and I had ideas for the cartoons, mm -hmm. and I had this little world I was going to create, and I couldn't do it when I was a kid. Yeah. So I spent my whole life learning how to do it I'm gonna finish it like someday that website will be my whole completely the way I want it with all mm -hmm. the cartoons and that's all that's it I just want to do it and I believe in it like it's for kids and it has a lot mm -hmm. of stuff to say and I think it's very positive mm -hmm. and it's just what I want to do like it that's has it. a lot of depth yes yeah, yeah. there's no message. motivation or there's nothing to like that to me it's just mm -hmm. I really want to do it <laughs> I just really want to see it's it amazing. Done. and you're yeah. doing an amazing job at it thank you yeah. mm -hmm. I mean I mean, I, I was just looking at those animations. I was thinking about how in the 50s and 60s, you know, the government through, through the National Film Board was doing stuff like that, mm -hmm. Thro you know, throwing a lot of money at it. Mm -hmm. And I don't imagine the National Film Board is, or is throwing money at you to do this creativity. They mm -hmm. actually, um, when I haven't gone to them yet, but I've been researching them, and they are entirely funding auteur animation. They do not do any commercial stuff. Yeah. They only do, you know, director, not unproduced art animation. So yeah. they are a really good place. And all of my animations for the last two years, like I said before, are funded by the Ontario Arts Council and the Toronto Arts Council. So there is um, mm -hmm. 
actually more in funding than there is in making money off of this kind of stuff. You can mm -hmm. produce it with the help of these mm -hmm. film boards yeah. uh, and then get your message out there and not have to worry about the commercial marketing aspect of it. That can be a bonus at the end. You know? Now what happens if government cuts off all funding to well, the arts and that sort of thing? Uh, well, What's your is there, do you have a plan B for that? For me, I also sell a lot of artwork. I do a little bit of commission work, and I do sell almost every painting that I make. So there's the two avenues. The big thing that I really appreciate about the grants, though, is it cuts that business side out. I don't mm -hmm. have to worry about the selling. I don't have to worry about the business meetings. I don't have to do that. I get the funding and I go to work. And that's that's where the grants funding is so But what happens if so they do appreciate. get cut off, though? Well, I mean, I know you sell well, it, but some people don't always get well, to sell their a work. A lot of people would be in a lot of trouble then, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I've seen some artists, I look at their CVs, and they receive a considerable grant every year for, you know, years and years and years and years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, maybe we should run an animation. So this is a sample. Um, this one I just did kind of a test. It was a one-day test when I got the grant to see how far I could make it with one day's worth of drawing, a little yeah. sketchbook in my computer. And since then, I've been working for months and months and months. The new stuff's not ready. I'm not going to show it quite yet. So I just wanted to show this little test. And it was really fun just to see, you know, very free form, you know, no thinking, no pre-planning, just what, what will happen if I just start doodling in the animation format. Very similar to what I would do on the street, but just in a different technique, yeah. So this one was just a little bit of a sort of surrealist nightmare kind of thing. <laughs> Mike Teeth can do that. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I would mention, that all the music I use for the animation is composed by a friend of mine, Mark Van Zyl, and performed by um, a, a group of original friends that I've compiled to do it. So it's all original music, too. We still, have a little, you know, we still have a ways to go with it, but I'm really proud that I, I don't have to use copyright or electronic music to make my videos. So no, that's that's really cool. Amazing. Yeah. So what else are you uh, up to? Um, oh, the fashion drawings. Let's show the fashion drawings. Why don't drawings. we do this? Yeah, last, yeah. This is the last, last video, right? So, so this, Yeah, this was my most recent. I just did a series of designs for the spring uh, upcoming, and I'll probably try to do some more in are the you, fall. And no, are you going to so. do a fat? It, uh, are you going to... I went to a fashion show at Canadian Fashion Week or whatever this past. Mm -hmm. uh, it was pretty yeah. awesome. It was good. Any intent? I've done some for fashion do shows. That? Yeah, we've done live performances on the shows. Uh, Gallery Thirteen Thirteen does a runway performance. But these are just some silly designs. Those were the kids uh, with no clothes watching, trying to decide who they're going to be. Um, there's an untitled business suit. I think his head and his blackberry have traded places. Uh, that's the sport resort, and she's surrounded by uh, barbed wire fences and poverty in her little bikini. That's the U.S. gangster. It kind of looks like a clown. This one I see a lot, unfortunately, is the Chic Chic with its imported accessory. People are actually wearing that in Kensington. And there's the um, superhero. Oh, yeah, when you have your bikini on the outside, you have to wear a mask. And that's the whole role of uh, all the fashion ones. You can see them all on the website. This is, yeah. So some of those have actually been turned into real? No, but I, I, they're mimics, satires of uh, actual fashions. Where I, right. what I, the idea behind my fashions is I'll draw a fashion and I'll pull out the semiotics and tell you what it's really all about. Because a lot of people wear things that they don't understand and they think that it's just pretty. Yeah. When there's a whole story behind really? it. Really? Can you give us an example of well, some kind of... The chic chic one is the one that drives me kind of crazy right now. Is There's these huge flowing Dubai desert dresses that people are wearing, and they don't understand that the, the hierarchy and the class systems and mm -hmm. the semiotics of slaves and the semiotics of Dubai and all the things that they're saying. They think that they're wearing a really ritzy, fancy dress, but they don't understand all the right. things that are going on behind that fancy dress. And that's one of the examples that I kind of hurting me right now because I see it in all over the place. It's a pretty hip one. Mm -hmm. It's to look like you're from Dubai. So That's a good way to... It's food for thought. Food for thought. Yeah. Well, certainly, I hope. Yeah. yeah. Alright, so what's up? What's next? Um, yeah, more animations. That's when I, I'm, I'm at home in this little tiny studio. I've got rid of all the painting stuff. I'm all around the computer and I'm drawing 24 frames per second to try to build a considerable animation. And I guess the last really neat thing is online, building mm -hmm. the website. My goal is to uh, get that studio even smaller into a knapsack so I can do That's a couple awesome. year travel, you know. I really wow. want to go and take this story on the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I got, yeah, the studio into a computer. Now the goal is a computer into the knapsack and awesome. on my way. Yeah. And where are you going to go? Any um, idea where? Probably Europe first, only because I have some places there. But yeah. I definitely want to do everything. I want to go to 
e uh, India, I want to go to Asia, I mm -hmm. definitely want to go to Japan, and South America too. I haven't done a lot of travel outside of North America, so I'm just ready to go. <laughs> I'm just Good. ready to go. Keep us posted on oh, what's for sure. going on. Yeah. Well, the website's great, and that's yeah. the goal, is that if I have it in my bag, everything I do, no matter where I am, will be right there online, Amazing. just the same as it was on the street. And what is the website for people oh, who want uh, to check heyapathy it out? Heyapathy.com. Yeah. Heyapathy.com. What, and what's the name from again? Hey apathy. Oh, hey apathy is just hello apathy, like a kind of a tongue in cheek. Yeah. When I first did it, it was those faceless bubble people, and it was mm -hmm. my sort of yelling at you all, saying, hey, who are you? Hey nice. apathy, yeah. All right. <laughs> thank you. Well, that thank was really you. Refreshing. Yeah. Great to have you in again yeah. and see what you're up to.